Adam is now guiding us through a cemetery. <laughs> if this was dangerous, I'd be completely wrecking our position with my giggles. It's not really a wishing well, but I feel like we used up all of our good will with Neptune. Okay, what do we need to go now? What do we need to do now? What the hell? <laughs> what is this? Some pretty ridiculously tight maneuvering going on in here. Mediterranean sailing at its finest. I'll admit, walls are a little thin. It's, like it's a party bus. Welcome to our self-inflicted adventure. What seems like a lifetime ago, we left Australia, intending to sail our way around the world. It's been a roller coaster since then, and while the plan has changed many times, we've been laughing our way through and learned a new lesson for every step of the way. And between us, the real adventure has only just begun. Last episode, we wrapped up our trip in Turkey with a whirlwind tour of Istanbul. So we're about to go into a mosque. We then headed back to Mili. But during our travels, we received a message from our good friend John Kretschmer. We may have room for you on our Amalfi Coast trip. We're now going to Italy. Surprise! <laughs> After packing our bags, yet again we left Ponte del Garda and started a three-day journey to Naples. Touchdown in Naples. We're going to roll the dice on public transport, trying to find our way to our Airbnb because we can't get on the boat until tomorrow. So let's try to save a few exploring. bucks. Yeah, basically it's just an excuse to go and get lost. We have time now. The pressure's off. All the flights are done. And we don't have to be at the boat until 5 p.m. tomorrow. So we've got heaps of time. So it's been about an hour since our last vlog. We walked down a motorway. Towards, towards the bus station where the bus didn't show up. Adam is now guiding us through a cemetery. I've got this under control, it's fine. <laughs> I'm not convinced, I'm really not. Um, I, I don't know where we are. I'm in, I'm in complete control. Mm -hmm. A sailor knows precisely where they are at all times. If this is our last vlog, then you, know, then you know where we were. It's quite, it's quite pretty though, look at this. At least we didn't land at night. <laughs> It's like the ancient ruins of Napoli. It's just first stop on the tour guide. Oh, look how tragic that is. Wow, it's like we're visiting museums already. That's a metaphor for our current situation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this must be a deserted town or something, surely. Where the hell are we? Maybe we can fill up a whole vlog with just our journey to our Airbnb. <laughs> oh, we're going up again, all right. I smell mint. We can pick some mint along the way. Have a nice mojito for our arrival. Skip across the rooftops. <laughs> Where are we? This is really creepy. Like, this is weird. The rats in the sewer. Will be the next stop. I'm. I'm really hoping that I'll. Oh, what? Wow, I feel like I need the better camera for this. It's quite beautiful. Oh! <laughs> I heard a voice. <laughs> I think now I'm just giggly with nerves. If this was dangerous, I'd be completely wrecking our position with my giggles. <laughs> Getting some really weird looks at you. What should we call this? Like the lost city of the lost city of Napoli. The dead. <laughs> the death that works. We're now an hour and a half into our stay in Napoli, and we found some form of public transport. Things are looking up. We now commence our tour of the Naples subway system. And the river system. Why are they flooded? That's a bit alarming. Sheila, I need to decompress 
for about 15 minutes prior to me properly giving a speech, but we have arrived. A nightmare of a journey, but we have arrived. And how about a shout out for our tour guide for the day? <laughs> We've arrived. <laughs> The next day we set off early to explore the new city that we'd arrived in. As we were only staying a night, we'd chosen a cheap and central Airbnb. Little did I know that when we arrived, it was in the heart of Spaganapoli, the local name for the old town. Walking down a maze of narrow alleyways, we stumbled upon mysterious churches, underground catacombs and beautiful statues and fountains, all dating back hundreds of years. So we're here at Santa Chiara Complex. Why did I stumble over that name? It's my name. This place is literally built for me. Um, ironically, actually, we've just... Um, so we're on this walking tour, uh, one of these free walking tour apps, which is actually pretty good. And it says that this building was built by Queen Sancha for Santa Chiara. Now, my sister is called Sanchia and I'm called Chiara. How weird is that? <laughs> The history of Naples itself spans back nearly 3,000 years to the ancient Greeks who founded the Naples area during the 8th century BC. It has passed through many hands since then, all adding their piece of history. And so it's no surprise that in 1995 the historic city centre was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's not really a wishing well, but I feel like we used up all of our good good uh, will with the with Neptune on our way across the Atlantic. So I'm just going to make a small donation to try to buy back. Have good luck. back on the boat for like a week and a bit we then raced off and did three days of traveling to get here and we are now racing off again to go and catch a train uh, to the actual boat and I just feel exhausted I'm, I'm not like on edge but I'm just like okay what do we need to go now what do we need to do now I need just to stop relax and know that our last step of the journey is an hour away by train and that's all that we need to do I can sit in any part of Italy and just soak everything up and enjoy myself so thoroughly because I freaking love Italy so much. But we do just wanted to sit down and just rest and get closer to the boat. So I think we've done a little bit of a walking tour of Napoli and now we're just going to try and head towards our final destination where we can just sit and just go, oh, uh, beer and just, and just relax, finally. So that's our next stop, I think. Randomly just walking down the street, we've just seen an orange tree just on the street just growing there. So cool. That's why I love Italy, it's so cool. <laughs> should be about ready for us to board. What the hell? <laughs> what is this? There's an infringement going on here. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow, okay, no gotta, way. I, gotta, I have to get a photo oh my of you guys. Guys. Not okay. It's even two as well. Unfortunately for us, the charter company didn't rename their boat just for our arrival. And we were actually on the boat next to it, a Beneteau 48. At around 6pm, our captain for the trip, John Kreshmer, was chomping at the bit to get off the dock and underway. 
Yeah, so you're gonna go ahead and pull it all the way through now. So do that. We are out of here. And so we sent the cleaners packing, assuring them that we could make the beds ourselves. We left Naples and headed for our first stop on the trip, Prosciutto. Some pretty ridiculously tight maneuvering going on in here, and uh, I'm glad I'm not driving, that's for sure. This is one thing that a boat like this is really good for. So it was a little bit of a schmuzzle getting off the dock and getting onto the next dock, but everyone's finally settled in. We've put the boat to bed for the night and uh, we're just sort of unpacking, putting everything away, getting ready for what will be a six day charter around uh, the Amalfi Coast. So it's going to be pretty exciting. I think I'll put the camera down tonight and just get to know everybody and we'll see you in the morning. to be a very very calm day but the mainsail is still going up. Um, I'm hoping that we can turn the engine off. Uh, it's looking a bit glassy this water. Not sure. So we are underway. To my left is Mount Vesuvius which destroyed Pompeii. We're on our way out to Sorrento to pick someone up and then I think we're going to spend the evening at Capri. So it's, uh, as you can see, we're motoring. We've got the main up just to stabilize the boat, but Mediterranean sailing at its finest. Uh, there's, there's no wind. So. How but are you enjoying the boat? We haven't really sailed it yet. It's motoring just fine. Um, sleeping 10 reasonably comfortably. The cockpit's taking all the, you know, absorbing all the equipment and all the food and the people and the bags. It's really good for that. Um, I am looking forward to taking it for a sail though. Uh, this particular specimen, not, it's, yeah, being a charter boat, it's not particularly well looked after, so it's sort of some of the rigging is a bit like a wet noodle, and the sails have seen better days. We'll, we'll see what we can do. I don't know. We'll do our best. I think it's, I'm actually surprised, I'm shockingly surprised that 10 of us aren't all tripping over each other. When we were unpacking yesterday, there were like three or four of us in the kitchen, and we were, you know, tripping over each other with shopping everywhere. But we actually managed to sit eight to 10 of us in the cockpit last night. Comfortably, and that really, really surprised me. It and breakfast definitely this morning, did. Downstairs. Like I was not convinced that we're going to get ten people to sleep in here. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. honestly, it's it's been it's just pretty comfortable. Fine. It's been not a problem at all. I'll admit, walls are a little thin. Uh, snoring from next door was, <laughs> yeah. um, was evident as we were trying to sleep. Somebody <laughs> got to sleep very quickly though. <laughs> Woke up everyone else while he was doing it. Not Adam. Not this me. Is not Adam. <laughs> anyway, it's fun so far. This is pretty good. So in the Kraken, we did the downstairs test of what it sounded like with the motor on. You can definitely hear the motor in here. Um, granted, I'm in the bedroom and it's probably about three extra feet away when I'm in the lounge room. So it's definitely noisier than um, the other boat that we were on. But it's always good to compare different boats. This is our bedroom, stateroom, cabin. This is our cabin. And I'll show you around the rest of the boat when people aren't flopping over um, all the couches. This is, the, this is probably the problem that we're gonna come up with this week is that having to film around bodies flopping around and sunbathing and everything like that. <laughs> no one's in here, so I'm gonna do a tour. That's a good idea. Yeah. Would you like to show us around? No, I'm making coffee. You got this. All right, fine. So here is the the, the the saloon. This is amazing. We had ten people at breakfast here today, which is freaking awesome. Point to note, negative point one. I came down the companionway, and there was you know someone sat there, someone sat there, someone sat there, and I had nowhere that like I nearly kind of just fell 
because there was nowhere to grab, which is kind of what we're talking about with like hip holds and hand holds. And we're motor sailing, so imagine when you're like hammering hard and you, you know, you, you need to have something to land on. And this, where Kiara's standing now, is a very open space. But, you know, it's not really what that boat was built for, so let it slide. Double bed here, double bed here, toilet, and another toilet. So, two double berths and a toilet each. That's insane. As far as like V-berth beds go, they're actually pretty reasonably sized. So I'm impressed with that. Galley, longitudinal galley, which is always a winner, although I would like it if maybe, like, you know, you do what you, do what you can with the space, but this is a long way to sort of fall and live. Like, it'd be very difficult to work here in such a large space. Nav station's just there behind Kiara, built into the saloon table. You've got all your radio and stuff, but rear double berth, rear double berth, bathroom and bathroom which is just insane. So there's 10 people living here at the moment and there's an 11th on the way and he's gonna sleep either there or in the cockpit. Oh, that's right, the bunk beds. These are bunk beds. I made a mistake a second ago. I said bathroom, 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 bathroom. It's actually bathroom, bathroom, bathroom. Bunk beds. So you've got double, 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 double bunk beds. So that's 10. Um, which is just an insanely, like, insane use of space. It's, uh, I mean, it's a big beamy boat. I think the beam of this boat is 15 feet and it carries it all the way aft. You've also got heaps of storage under the floor, under all these chairs. Like it's, I said it before, it's like it's a party bus. It is really good at what it's built for, which I admire. That's my whole thing, like pick something and do it well. And this, this boat has chosen to be built to, to house a lot of people and go sailing on a nice day. And it does it well, it really does.